Yeah, we're recording now. We're recording. So, welcoming to my game of the year. Also, game of a lifetime. Also, known as God of War Rider Rock Review. Um, so, I didn't want to do a review before I got literally 100% on the No Mercy difficulty. So, after that, after yesterday, woke up today, worked out all that stuff, and now I'm ready to do the review. Finally, finally, finally. Um, I'm going to try to make these videos more frequently now. I didn't do them for a few months. So there will be no spoilers. I will only use videos like you can see here that's officially posted by um, PlayStation. So the gameplay you see is like no spoilers at all. It's just like the God of War Ragnarok videos leading up to the review. So the video you see in the background is just for a video background, right? It's nothing like no spoilers, anything. In the review, I won't mention any spoilers. Only like gameplay stuff that you've seen or heard of. Or I will like reference stuff if you like play the game, if you, that you will like understand what I mean, right? You, you, you get what I mean. You, you will understand what I mean. So uh, let's get into it. First off, the story. It literally follows up, like the beginning of this game, literally follows up to questions from the last game. It does a really, 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 really good job following up uh, some stuff. It doesn't answer all questions, which I think they do on purpose, but it answers the most important, important questions, except one, except one. And that question is, I mean, it's basically, without spoiling, it's like, who blew the horn? Uh, I don't think that's a spoiler that you know, but you really don't know who does that in this game. Otherwise, to that, it follows up a lot of good things. Um, tells us a lot about the stuff that happened in the last game, compared to this game and stuff like that. I think what I like the most about the story, obviously without being like epic and stuff, is the fact that they reference Kratos' old past. I'm not just talking about like, you know, all his past in God of War 3, like the last game. No, I'm literally talking about, you have conversations in this game where like, they will reference Ghost of Sparta, they will reference his daughter, they will reference the things that he used to do uh, back in the day. They even had a fun conversation about uh, PlayStation All-Stars, which is just like, I'm sure it's a joke, but that was like a funny one, right? But literally in the main part of the story, Kratos talks about himself in a way where like, this is a new character. This is literally a new character. And I really, 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 really like that. Like the, 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 the story without spoiling, obviously. First of all, the boss battles in the main story. Obviously, they come on later. Like you start off hot, then it comes a little bit of a slow burn. But then later on, it catches up. It is really, it's so good. And I couldn't just get enough of it, you know. Which leads me to talk about the, uh, obviously the gameplay. The improvements to game, oh, you have the stuff from the last game and just added stuff to it. Added like new, wep new like, uh, what's it called? New weapon abilities to it. Um, most, the, the biggest thing right off the bat you understand is the uh, holding the triangle button or spamming the triangle button uh, to have like a attack where you can make the enemies go like in a type of element shock. So like, let's say you wanna set someone on fire. You can you know, spam the um, triangle button to get the, uh, the blades very, very hot, and then I'll try to basically put them on fire, right? And after that, you can like switch axes. This is what I like the most. It makes, like the gameplay really makes you vary a lot. And what I mean by that is they truly like, like let's say like here, they, they attack someone, right, with an ax. You attack someone with an ax, and then like they become frozen. If, if they're like, obviously, if you unlock the ability to do it, it, which is very, very cheap in the beginning, like everyone, everyone should unlock it, obviously, you can damage more with the blaze then, which makes you obviously switch around. So it makes you like experiment in a very, very good way. I don't want to like, obviously talk about like, um, later stuff in the game, but, but what I will say is the variety in gameplay and the gameplay enemies is huge. N not only like from environment to environment, but also like every map feels so different in a way like the for example there's a jungle map i'm not gonna split which one there's like obviously helheim there's all, all these you know alfheim they all they feel so different when you play and they have so many different enemies it's not the last thing last last game where like a lot of people complain about the trolls this i mean obviously there are trolls just like randomly from the map when you do side stuff which we're gonna get into but but here's the big but the game like it is so good that something happens later in the game where you unlock something new. That's all I say. And that adds so much to the game where like, man, it is, it is great. Uh, but obviously outside of the gameplay improvements where uh, you can, you know, there's new attacks, 
new ways of fighting it, it makes you really switch between weapons what i really do like about the um uh, the weapons changes is the ability to uh you can like customize them in a way where let's say you have unlock a new attack to make sure you use that attack they will have you do this attack 50 times if you do the attack 50 times you're gonna unlock a slot in the slot you can choose that this attack is gonna do like elemental damage more stun damage more like movement stuff like it, it, it makes you like use the the stuff you're actually gonna use in gameplay you just like if you unlock a new attack obviously by the time you progress you maybe unlock like once every like hour or something and then it's gonna make you use that attack not only so you make sure you remember that attack which really helps and then like you get rewarded for using the attack and it's great like I, I really wish that instead of just you know normal games you just unlock attacks right well in this game you unlock attacks and it makes you, like it rewards you for actually using them it's just just like in the last game i feel like you could just if you play on easy or maybe normal you can probably beat the game by just doing you know the special attacks and normal attacks but in this game obviously you can't do that technically but it, it, it's so much more rewarding especially in higher difficulties like i play uh it's very like rewarding to actually use the combos that you give you it's i mean the gameplay improvements i just love them i love them now uh obviously the story a uh, good follow-up like i said one thing that i um really really thinks is amazing when it comes to story and side of the content obviously is the performance like the game looks amazing i could not tell like i can't tell the difference between like the different modes but i can't tell the difference in fps modes like i really try to take a picture like screenshot right with the phone and uh, in the game i can't it's so hard to see a difference between like the 40 frames mode and like the 120 hertz mode but the difference in frame rate is obviously like you can tell like i have 120 hertz tv 90 to 100 fps is amazing it is truly amazing like this is one like we're like okay it's a cross-gen game but what would you rather have a game that's only current gen 30 frames or 40 fps or a cross-gen game that looks like this plays like this and it's just amazing so it's like eh, i got over it that it was a cross-gen game a long time ago now all it, I've talked about a lot of the stuff that I like, uh, which is obviously the map. Like, the maps are huge. The maps are... Like, this game, the sign contact, without spoiling, it's like you, you discover a part of the map, then you discover another part of the map, and you just keep discovering. And you, and you really see how big this game is. Like, you understand why it's, like, I think 84 gigabytes right now on PS5, the patch down. Over 105, 107 gigabytes on PS4. It's not just there to be there. It is there because it's a huge game. It is truly a huge game. Um, so from that perspective, the, the side contact, some of the stuff you see in the side contact is just, it's night and day from the first game. Like it, in the first game, may, like, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, I think Valkyrie Queens, the Valkyrie, that stuff is here. But here's everything just ramped up. Like you remember the stories. Like so, some of the side stuff is actually tied in to the um, main stuff. So not only does like, not only do you have only side stuff there, just more like of a challenging stuff, which obviously comes in later. A lot of the side stuff you play during the main story, they will actually try to convince you to play right away instead of uh, waiting a minute after the story because it fits right there. For example, without spoiling, let's say someone you know, gets lost uh, in the main story. It's an option to go find them and then do it at, or you can wait to do it after the story. But like anything better do it right now, especially like oh, what happened to that guy or should we do the main story? Let, let's do the side quest and you get rewarded for it. You get really, really good items. Um, yeah, obviously for the future of God of War series, do I think there's going to be more? Obviously, there's this game obviously probably broke some records. I'm not sure if it did, but it's, it's sold really well for the places that we heard of. And in terms of like what I think the next game is, I am not sure. But I do think it's going to be more God of War games. That's all I say without doing a uh, spoiler, obviously. Now, some of the things I did like, there was a part of the game that dragged out uh, a bit too much. I think it could be shorter, but that's a, just a small part where like I overlook it. I, li I literally do overlook it because it's so irrelevant when you, know, like, you look at the whole game. It doesn't really matter that much to me. Now, another thing that really just a small thing that nitpicked me was the menu system. I don't know why the menu system is the way it is, but it is the way it is. I got used to it, but it's not the most like friendly way seeing all these things on screen. Um, yeah, that's all I say about that. Uh, what I didn't like about the game. Now, here comes the um, 
here comes the uh, part that I really wanted to talk about. It is the last two hours of the game. Now, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the last two hours of, of the game felt like... <laughs> it felt like half the budget was onto that. Obviously, you can, as you can imagine without playing the game, the two hour, the last two or three hours of the game is going to be huge, obviously. But that those parts were like so intense, so good, and a little bit rushed probably in some parts, but I feel like it needed to be kind of like that because they wanted like throw away the ending to this saga. There's not gonna be a trilogy. This is two games in the Norse mythology. And as you see on screen right now, accessibility obviously was there. I didn't use it much, so I'm not gonna talk about it um, from that point of view, but there is a lot. I, like I look at the menus and I just tried to see stuff in the beginning. There is so, so, so much about it. So um, I'm sure they're gonna get some rewards for that. Now, granted, uh, the graphics, and uh, I talked about performance, but obviously the graphics looks to me the same. I mean, it is amazing. It looks like I played God of War on PC earlier this year on a 360 Ti in 4K. Now I didn't have 120 frames, frames, but I got around 80, 90 with DLSS, right? And it looked amazing, but this game is like, I, if this is like the cross-gen games we're gonna get uh, for the next few months, because I do think next year they're gonna t like uh, be over with, I'm cool with that. I'm just cool with that, you know? I'm just cool with that, cool with that. And yeah, I feel like the end. Well, now, what I think about the ending without spoiling, because a lot of people que uh, question what I think about it. I think it gave a good closure. Like, I think it fits. I think it fits without spoiling. I think if you play the game, it fits. That's what I think about the ending. I think it fits the game and these two past games, how it ended. And I think it literally it's how it ended how it should, in my opinion. Um, at least like the, the like the last ending ending part, right? Without spoiling. Now, yeah, um, amazing game. It is definitely, definitely my favorite game of all time. Now, before everyone, you know, some people get upset when you say that to a modern game like this. I played over a thousand games in my life. I finished over a thousand games by my t lifetime. I probably played like 1,200, 1,300 games uh, in total. But I've, since any SNES, I've played a lot of games. So it's not like I'm just saying it to say it. God of War, right? After this game, God of War is definitely my favorite franchise. Before that, I was, I was thinking like, okay, God of War 3, I love, I like, I love the trilogy. I love the PSP games. I love, um, uh, oh, pff, that was the last one. It was my second favorite now, 2018 game. But I've always felt like Metal Gear Solid was like the perfect franchise. But with this game, it's, just, it's hard to top it. I feel like they, they took the God of War franchise and just like put so much heart into this game and thought also, which this is Kratos. Like you can see the evolution of Kratos. In the last game, there was a lot of the old Kratos in him, right? Well, in this game, you can see him accepting that he's a new person. He's a new type of God. Was just and seeing this journey from like 2006 was right where I started playing God of War. Seeing Kratos ever like evolutionize all, all of these games, becoming so mad in the trilogy, right? In the PSP games, changing his outlook in life with the Atreus in the last game, changing again this game, like just the thought of Kratos. He is, in my opinion, the PlayStation mascot without a doubt. Probably if not the best-selling uh, PlayStation exclusive with the first God of War 2018, with over 23 million copies sold. I'm sure Last of Us and Spider-Man is close, but like no one has done, has like the consistency of Kratos. Obviously, Gran Turismo goes way back, he has ups and downs, but God of War series has always been there. Like the trilogy did amazing. God of War 2018 did amazing. This game is probably gonna do also the sort of record. It reviewed amazing, it's, it is amazing. So that's my opinion of this game. Absolutely my game of the year. Um, if it wins, if it wins, if it doesn't, I do think obviously Elden Ring is a worthy winner. It's probably gonna be Elden Ring or uh, what's it called? Uh, God of War Ragnarok, without a doubt. But that was that, that was that, that was the video. I try not to talk too much, but uh, this video is probably too long anyway, so I'm gonna go uh, run it up here. And uh, it is uh, almost 15 minutes. Uh, I tried to make it 10, but I just keep talking about it. If there's any questions, by the way, if there's any questions that you guys wanna ask me about this game or anything about it, there are some hard side stuff. Yes, there is someone harder than the Valkyrie Queen. In fact, there's two bosses that are harder than the Valkyrie Queen, in my opinion. Maybe one or two. It depends how you look at it. But yeah, there are some. Like, I tried to say, like, I tried to not talk about those things in specific. But yeah, there are harder bosses than the Valkyrie Queen. Um, if I missed anything, please let me know. Other than that, thank you guys, and I'll see you in a, in a different video.